<laughs> what do you remember about about that day that you recorded the guitar solo? Who else was in the studio with you? Were your bandmates there, and and would they get involved in in how you put stuff together? We recorded for five or six weeks at Electric Lady in New York City, which was super exciting. Oh wow! The first week we did basic tracks. So at that point, only in dreams. By the end of the first week, we had uh, like the drums and the bass, and they were as you hear them now. There was no way to go back and change them later. Week two, week three goes by. Week four. At this point, Rick Ocasek is like, "All right, at the end of this song, you have three minutes of bass and drums playing the same thing over and over and over again. What the hell?" <laughs> And I was like, don't worry, it's going to be amazing. And I had this vision for what it was going to sound like. But for whatever reason, I was, I was very resistant to, to finishing it. I knew it was something I was going to have to improvise. There was going to be a lot of trial and error. And I felt awkward with Rick there and with other, you know, other people around. So I just kept putting it off. And then it became every day. He was like, Rivers, you gotta, we got to take care of this part of the song. The rest of the record's almost done. You have this weird three minutes where nothing's going on. I was like, don't worry, it's going to be great. Finally, there was one Sunday where he couldn't come into the studio. I came in. I had the place to myself. It was just me and the engineer. I took a couple hours and I'd improvise and go back and improvise till I took a wrong turn and then punch in there. Let's take over from there. That's how it ended up where it is. And, and I was, I really needed that time by myself to do this kind of work. The rest of the album, we were mostly just recording what how, stuff we already had been playing for a year. I mean, we played these songs hundreds of times over the, that first year and a half in, in the clubs and in rehearsals. But this, this section had required a lot of um, in-studio creation. And is that you playing both on the left and the right? Yep. I played all the guitar on the album. Oh, you did? Yeah. What's, so was Brian not in the band quite yet? He wasn't yet? in the band yet. Because there was the original guitar player... I did all the guitar, <clears throat> all the guitars in between the departure of the first guitar player and the arrival of Brian the second. Can we? You mentioned, or I mentioned, the Blue Warmoth Strat. Can we just drill down on that a little bit? Because that's like people. That's sort of a um, iconic guitar to a lot of people uh, out there in the world. How did that guitar come to be? Did you buy it put together? Did you put it together yourself? Like why? Why humbuckers? You know all that. All that kind of stuff. I had to tell the story of that guitar. Our, that was our first guitar player, Jason. He he was very, very good with gear and building things. So he built it for himself. Um, I, I, don't, I really don't know anything about it, except that it sounded really <laughs> sounded really good and it looks cool. So he left the band, but he left you his guitar as a token? Yeah. So Weezer originally, even before he joined, the idea was... I was going to play electric guitar. We were going to get a second guitar player who has only played acoustic. So for the first year, oh, wow. he only played acoustic. And he built that warmth for himself, but he was the acoustic guy. So I ended up using his guitar because it sounded cooler than my Charvel. <laughs> that would have been a very different look if you'd been playing a Charvel. I mean, that. so you, you talk about Jason, the original guitar player, leaving sort of in that in that period. And then Brian coming in, but then also Matt, the original bass player, left a few years later after after Pinkerton and all that. And it got me thinking about, you know, a lot of times in bands, bands start and eventually one person kind of winds up becoming the de facto leader, or the de facto songwriter. They get the, you know, kind of take over the band creatively or whatever. Had those roles not really been determined? Is that like, was the process of making that first record when that kind of things fell into place in that way? It definitely started moving in that direction. That being said, it all started with me. Like I, uh, first there was no Weezer and I said, all right, I'm going to write 50 songs and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to form a band. I did that and I f first partnered up with, with the drummer, Pat, and then we added Jason and finally Matt. So it kind of all started with me, but it definitely was a band. Like I, ne I needed those guys to even get, get off the ground and get going. I, I wasn't like this super determined leader from, from the start. Um, so does that answer your question? <laughs> it does. Yeah, it's perfect. 